My wife promised she'd never hurt me. Now I've caught her keating with her heatings, and my life is in my lace. I'm 28M. About three weeks ago I discovered that my wife of less than a year, Bianca 27F, had been cheating on me. When Bianca and I started dating, she told me she had recently broken up with her ex-boyfriend, whom she had dated for three years, and was currently single. I was also single then and had not dated for two years because my previous relationship left me scarred. Since we both had been hurt from our last relationship, Bianca and I promised to never cheat or do anything that would hurt each other. I knew I would keep to my end of the promise and hoped Bianca would do the same. We dated for two years and some months before we got married. Being with Bianca brought me the most happiness out of all my exes. She was a natural humorist and always had a way of making the people around her smile. The first few months of our marriage were filled with laughter and fun. I always looked forward to being with her. While Bianca was a social media influencer and had her own online store, I worked as a data analyst for a big tech firm in our town. I'll admit that there were days when my job was so demanding that I didn't spend enough time with Bianca as promised. In a month, I would miss our dates twice because I was either overwhelmed with completing a task at the office or completely forgot we were supposed to attend a function together. Each time this happened, I tried to make it up to her, which would settle it. Her favorite chocolate was Snickers, and gifting her a box of Snickers or a few bars always made her happy. Six months after we married, my company allowed me to work three weeks remotely and one week on site. When this happened, I was glad I could finally spend more time with Bianca since her social media influence was something she did remotely. She was also happy when I told her about my new work schedule, and things started returning to how it was for us. Within the first four weeks I started working remotely, I noticed something off with Bianca. I knew always being on her phone was part of her job as an influencer but I noticed something else. Every time Bianca was on her phone and I walked close to her, I saw she would quickly change the app she was on and would switch to something else. Even though I wasn't standing next to her, I could tell what she did by her body and finger movements. Aside from that, she became secretive with her laptop, and each time she heard my voice or I walked in her direction, she would close the laptop and pretend she wasn't using it. Everything always happened so fast but she never knew I had been observing her. One day when I couldn't take it anymore, I confronted her about it. She said that I was being ridiculous and that she had nothing to hide from me. That day she was doing something on her laptop, and she even asked me to come and take a look to clear my curiosity. I did, and there was nothing suspicious about it. She even showed me her conversations on all her social media accounts, which were strictly work conversations. In the two years and some months Bianca and I had dated, that was the first she allowed me to read her chats. While we dated we used to have access to each other's phones, but I never checked or went through her chats with her clients because I felt it was confidential. I had no reason to even go through them. I trusted her, but after she showed me the conversations by herself, I strongly felt something was amiss. It was very unlike her to show me the activities on her laptop or her phone conversation on her own. Maybe she thought she could mislead me by showing me the conversation she wanted me to see, but I didn't fall for it. I could quickly tell when someone was acting shady, and with all the stories I had read here on Reddit, I couldn't ignore the feeling that Bianca was hiding something from me. Some days passed, and I didn't mention the issue of her being sneaky with her phone and laptop again. I kept watching her to be sure I wasn't making false allegations before taking action. A few days after the confrontation, Bianca had a few of her influencer friends over for a small get-together at our place. We all had a great time together, but Bianca was a bit distracted. Even when everyone was eating, laughing, and having a nice time together, Bianca kept texting someone between meals. It happened numerous times that even her friends noticed. One of them was forced to ask her whom she kept texting. When she looked up and saw everyone's eyes were on her, she dropped her phone on the table, faked a smile, and said it was work-related. And she was done. So no one said anything after that, and we all continued to eat. After the guests were gone and we were cleaning up, Bianca the topic of the client she kept texting all the while during the evening. During the evening, my evening, she said the client wanted her to be his brand ambassador for a skincare product and promote his product for a year. Now, this is a very normal conversation to have with your spouse, but it wasn't normal for us because Bianca never discussed her clients or what they wanted her to do for them. Regarding our profession, she just did her thing, and I did mine. So, her starting a conversation about her client felt off to me. It was almost like she was trying to give an excuse for her action before I asked her about it. It didn't say much after she did. I only smiled and pretended to be a part of the conversation. Meanwhile, a thousand thoughts were already running through my head. I already knew I wouldn't find anything on her phone or laptop that could show she was cheating on me, as I suspected, but I came up with the idea of listening to her conversation. There's this app that allows you to see what another person is doing on their phone, listen to their conversations, and see their messages. To do this, I had to install the app on my phone and her phone. That way I could listen to her calls and see everyone she chatted with. The reason I was so jumpy to find out if Bianca was cheating on me, even when she didn't act strange around me or change her attitude towards me, was because I had been cheated on in my last relationship. And even though I told Bianca I loved her, 
and believed she wouldn't cheat on me, a part of me was still looking for cheating signs. I consciously read meaning to everything, even when it was normal because I didn't want to ignore the red flags as I did in my previous relationship. After successfully installing the app on both our phones, I started my investigation. Truly, Bianca was always chatting with her clients. But there was someone else she chatted with every day, and she was careful enough to not call him or take his calls whenever I was at home or we were together. Two days after I paired my phone with Bianca's phone, she spoke with him for the first time. And the funny thing was, she had known him for years. He was the same ex-boyfriend she told me she had broken up with. When I listened to their conversations for the first time, it was clear that the guy knew Bianca was married and I worked from home. That evening, Bianca sent me outside to get some groceries because she had forgotten to pick some of them. I was driving to the grocery store when they had that call. He asked Bianca about me, and she told him that I had gone to get groceries. She told him that she pretended to forget the groceries on her way back so I would go and get them and give them enough time to talk on the phone. AP was kind enough to tell her to be careful so I wouldn't catch her, and Bianca said, Oh, Jackie would never leave me. He loves me too much to leave me. Poor thing. And after she said that, they laughed and continued to talk about how they would meet later that evening. After listening to all of their conversations, I returned home in anger. When I got home, Bianca asked why I didn't get the groceries again. I lied that I got a call from the office to come and submit something urgently, and she bought it. By the time I got home, she was already dressed and had her makeup on. She told me she was going to hang out with some of her girlfriends and would be back before midnight then kissed me on the cheek like she was being truthful, and left. So soon as she left, I called one of my friends and told him what I had found out. He offered to come with me to the restaurant Bianca and her boyfriend were going to. So when we arrived at the restaurant, we saw Bianca cuddled up with her boyfriend while he was trying to feed her. I just walked up to her, ensured that she saw me, and I walked out of the restaurant. Everything happened so fast, and her facial expression showed she was shocked to see me there with my friend. So immediately I walked out of her, she got up from her table and followed me. At first, she wanted to pretend she hadn't done anything wrong, but when she saw my friend recording her, she knew she had been busted. As I expected, she came up with an excuse that she had come to meet with her client, and that it wasn't what it looked like, but I didn't say a word to her. So my friend and I drove back home, and Bianca arrived shortly after we got home. She came into the house and tried to talk to me, but I was more focused on picking my clothes. We jointly rented the apartment, so I couldn't kick her out even if I wanted to. Instead, I took the stuff I needed and left with my friend that night. Since that night Bianca has been sending me multiple messages and calling me repeatedly. After weeks of not taking her calls, she sent voice notes of yet another series of lies. She said that her ex-boyfriend, whom she was cheating with, wanted to connect her with a big client hence she went to meet him. But somehow she felt cold because of the tiny strap gown she wore, and he tried to cover her. This was supposed to explain why they were cuddling each other, and she thought I would buy it. Until now she doesn't know that I paired our phones and I still see the conversation between them. Just three days ago, I made a recent discovery. There's a contract that Bianca has been doing for more than two months now where the pay is great. Her AP was one of the employees of the brand which she was promoting. This means there was an iota of truth in what she said. I also found out they have been badmouthing their company's products. I guess their love rekindled when he came back into the picture. Now the thing is, I'm so sure Bianca is not supposed to be involved with any of the company's staff or badmouthing the company. If the organization finds out, her contract will be terminated and her image will be tarnished. Regarding the video my friend made, I haven't posted it online as intended because I have mixed feelings about it. For the past years Bianca has maintained an excellent public image, and even though she gets dragged online by some of her annoying fans, she has not had any serious issues with the brand she influences. Right now I'm going through so much emotionally, and I want to repay her for using me like that. I intend to leak the conversation between Bianca and her boyfriend and the video of them together. I hope no one will try to advise me against my plans because my mind is already made up. Most times, I wonder why people get married in the first place because a lot of women are not worth the sacrifices we, men, make for them. In Bianca's case, I thought we would build a family together, but it turned out she's just like every other woman out there who wants to eat her cake and have it. Update 1. Hello everyone. Thank you for your comments. It's sad that I am only finding out from your comments that influencers have a high infidelity rate. I married Bianca because she looked like she was the one. Besides that, I fell in love with her personality, not her profession and we dated for almost three years. Also, I took my time with her before we married to get to know her well, and I thought I knew her well enough before marrying. She told me she had cut off ties with her ex-boyfriend and would never have anything to do with him again, even if he were the last man on earth. Her words. I guess I was dumb to fall for her words. My only joy is that I took action immediately after I started suspecting her. Maybe if I still wanted to be the good husband who showers his wife with enough benefits of doubt, I would still be stuck with her now and would be innocently helping her pick the perfect outfit for her girl's night out. So, for my revenge plan, I have posted the video of Bianca and her AP, captured at the restaurant, 
where they were cozily snuck into each other. The video was not received well by her fans who called her a cheater. I also leaked the conversation between Bianca and her lover where they were badmouthing the brand. The good news is that the company she influenced has terminated their contract with her, and her boyfriend has been fired too. Also Bianca and her boyfriend had been saying all forms of bad things about a particular product she was promoting, and they talked about how the company had been ripping people off with their substandard product. So Bianca was forced to make an online apology. She had to take back everything she said, and then had to deal with the company afterward. When this happened it not only ruined her reputation with the company that fired her, but also caused a ripple effect with her other contract. Other brands had to end their contract with her because of how her video and chat spread like wildfire. Because of this she was literally left with nothing at the end of it all. As if ruining her influencer reputation was not enough, the headlines carried her name about the video of her cheating on her husband. It was so satisfying to have friends call and ask if what they saw online was true and I assured them that it was. Also, before I shared the video and conversation online, I sent it to her parents. So I told them it was officially over between Bianca and me. I also said some stings about Bianca, and how she was a disgrace to herself and womanhood. Then I blocked both of their numbers from calling. Two days ago, Bianca showed up at my office and created a scene. I told security I wouldn't see her, but she refused to leave. She wasn't even allowed into the building, but she kept yelling my name and was kicked off the property. Serves her right. Since the evening I moved out of the house, I haven't seen her face to face. I had only been following her on Facebook and Instagram to see how messed up everything had been for her. Thank you everyone for your kind suggestions and advice. I will make another update soon. Update 2. Hello everyone. Thank you for your comments. It's been a week and some days since I made the last update, and I wanted to wait till after the divorce was settled, but something happened yesterday, and I want to share it. Bianca found out that I was the one who leaked the conversation and video online. Maybe her parents told her, but I'm not sure. She was livid when she came to my friend's house, where I was crashing after leaving my apartment. But when Bianca came, she started yelling that I had ruined her life and promised she would destroy mine, too. She said so many horrible things. One of them was that she regretted marrying me, and claimed she didn't know what she saw in a low life like me to marry me. She said many rude things and became violent when she saw my friend recording her again. And because of her anger, she picked up a huge stone from my friend's lawn, and threw it at the window from where my friend was recording her. So the stone cracked the window and my friend's phone fell while he hurried to pull his hand inside the house. So I was so furious and went outside to confront her. In the process of us at each other, she brought out a small pen knife and slashed all four tires of my car in my presence. Then she used the knife tip to scratch a long line from the front door to the back door and said, Well, how do you like your new car? Then she left. I have never been so angry in my life. Right now I cannot move my car unless one change all four tires. And I cannot drive the car around with a long scratch mark. So my friend insisted that I sue her in court, and he had everything recorded from inside the house. He will also be suing her for the damage to his window, and he isn't even joking about it. I have decided to sue Bianca because I cannot let her get away with the damage she did. She will pay every penny it costs to replace all tires and spray slash paint my car. Concerning her social media presence, she has been very quiet lately. The rave about her infidelity and bad-mouthing the brand she was promoting has gone down, but she has not been making her Instagram live videos and other things she used to do. I also forgot to mention that many people unfollowed her mainly because of the video. People commented that they used to envy our marriage and how she painted us to be perfect couples online. They even found it difficult to believe she would do such a thing in our first year of marriage, which was meant to be our honeymoon phase. Anyway, what has happened has happened. I cannot condone infidelity just to look perfect in the eyes of people I don't even know. I will make another update once everything has been settled. Thank you for your time. Update 3 Hello everyone. I know it has been a while since I made my last update. I had to wait for everything to be finalized before posting again. Thank you for your patience. Meanwhile, I appreciate your support in me suing Bianca for the damages she made. I am overjoyed as I make this update because everything happened just how I wanted it. My friend and I sued Bianca for damages, and the court ruled in our favor. Can you all believe Bianca tried to deny shattering my friend's window and slashing my tires? She said I was jealous because she left me for her ex-boyfriend, and I slashed the tires to frame her. She didn't even remember that she was being recorded by my friend, and all the evidence we needed was in that video. We told the judge we had a video of her slashing my tires, and the judge asked to see it. When the judge found out that she was lying she was angry. She asked for an estimate of what it would cost to replace all four tires and spray that part of my car and I showed it to her. I followed your suggestions and checked for the cost of everything plus workmanship. The judge gladly asked her to pay for them. That same day she had a case with my friend. The judge didn't let her lie or defend herself, because she had seen the video of Bianca being violent and throwing the stone at my friend's window. She also ruled in my friend's favor, and Bianca was pissed. I enjoyed looking at her angry facial expression. I was thinking her dear boyfriend would be around to support her, but he didn't show up. Two weeks after the court case, the divorce papers were ready and I had the lawyer send them to her. She didn't even waste time signing them, and we concluded everything. 
Watching her play victim in the circumstance she created for herself was funny. I'm now happy to announce that Bianca is officially a part of my past. Unlike her, who goes back on her words, I'll never have anything to do with her again. I have blocked her contact on all mutual social media platforms. Now on to the next story. Story 2. Discovered my wife was cheating and my son wasn't mine, so I got revenge by exposing everything. I, 34, recently divorced my ex-wife, 29F, because she cheated on me and destroyed everything we struggled to build together. I met my wife at a bar for a friend's birthday. It wasn't like went there to relax. We attended my friend's birthday hangout, and she only tagged along with her friend, who knew the celebrant. At the hangout we got along well, and I liked her. After the party we exchanged contacts, and I offered to give her and her friend a ride home. From that night we became close and chatted occasionally online. During the first few months I knew her, we didn't see each other because I had a girlfriend then, and my wife and I were only friends. But after my ex-girlfriend broke up with me, my wife and I became close, and in no time, we were inseparable. We ended up dating for two years plus, and we married. In the first year of our marriage, Everything was beautiful and pleasing. We both worked hard and tried our best to keep everything rolling, but in the second year of our marriage, my wife had to stop working because she became pregnant, and her pregnancy had a lot of complications. The complications were so much that I feared the child would not make it, but thankfully, she gave birth to a healthy baby. Throughout the time she stayed home to rest, I worked morning and night to ensure I raised enough money to pay the bills and take care of other necessary things, including getting baby stuff. Fast forward to after she gave birth, my wife insisted that she remain home to nurse the baby for six months before she resumed work. Even though this meant more responsibility on my shoulder, I agreed to it. I did all of this because I loved my wife and the baby and did not want her to feel uncomfortable. I sacrificed so much, believing that I was making life easier for my wife, but I was only fooling myself and working hard for nothing. Most people say that when their wives cheat, they are always cues, but even as I share my story, I'm still shocked that my wife could cheat on me under my nose. I will also say I blame myself because I should have been more vigilant, but I didn't see any signs because I trusted her so much and did not think she would cheat on me. It was even more painful that after four years of being married to the woman I thought loved me, I discovered she had been cheating on me from our first year of marriage. The day I found out, I accidentally stumbled upon some intimate voicemails on our home line, and after listening to all of them, I was broken. So broken that I could not stand up from the ground where I sat. At first, when I heard her voice, I thought there were messages she had left her office, since they went way back. Aside from recognizing her voice, I also recognized our next-door neighbor's voice, and the shocking part was he was a pastor and was flirting with my wife. He is the kind of religious church pastor who talks to everyone he meets about God and the rest. He'd even make you feel like some sinner if you didn't listen to him this was his personality. If I say hearing the intimate voicemails between him and my wife came as a shock, it's an understatement. Another shocking thing was that they kept mentioning my son's name in their conversations, and this neighbor of mine asked after my son almost every time he sent a voicemail, and I had a stomach-churning feeling that there was something I didn't know about. By this time, my son was almost three years old, and all the thoughts of me not being his biological father crossed my mind. So, I secretly conducted a paternity test that same week, and when the results came out, I was shattered. We were not a match. It felt like a bad dream, and I wanted to wake up, but I couldn't because it was reality. Meanwhile, my attitude towards my wife had totally changed. I was literally like a ticking time bomb waiting to explode, and I wanted to confront her and kick her and her baby out of the house, but I came up with a better plan. A plan that would publicly humiliate her and bring her infidelity to the limelight. Four days after I got the paternity test results, I lied to my wife that I had been promoted at the office, and she was so excited. So, to mark my promotion, I suggested that we throw a small party, and invite our close neighbors, her parents, and my parents to come and celebrate with me, and she agreed. We made the necessary preparations, and I invited the neighbors myself, including her affair partner. On D-Day, two days after her parents and my parents came as I had invited them, and her affair partner with his wife and daughter came too. To mock him I asked him to do an opening prayer for our party, and he did that with glee. I had already collected evidence of their affair, including phone records and voicemail transcripts. The party started on a good note, and everyone who came congratulated me for the promotion, lol. While everyone was drinking and gisting, I asked the DJ I hired to change the song to my preferred song, and I paid him extra to keep it playing no matter how everyone reacted. My preferred song was a compilation of all the voicemails between my wife and my neighbor. When the audio started nobody understood what was happening until my wife recognized her voice, and her app recognized his voice. Not just that, a P's wife recognized her husband's voice, and all hell broke loose. She created a scene and hit him continuously in the presence of everyone, and he could not even defend himself. On the other hand, my wife's face turned pale as she froze. While the whole drama between App and his wife was going on, I called everyone's attention and told them my wife had something important to tell me and her family, 
and she was confused. Her eyes were already filled with tears, and she could not even look her disappointed parents in the eye. When I told her to go ahead and tell everyone who her son's biological father was, her eyes widened, and she started stuttering. At that point, everyone was quiet, and everyone's eyes were on my wife, including App's wife. So at this point I was so mad and could not contain my anger anymore. I yelled at her, and she hesitated. She mentioned her app's name, and everyone gasped. App's wife fell to the ground in disbelief, and people had to rush to her. So at the same time, my wife went on her knees and told me she could explain. She said something about her app coming over to preach to her on a particular day, and it happened. So when she found out she was pregnant for him, the only thing she could do was pin the pregnancy on me as her husband. And she didn't tell me because she would hurt my feelings, but as time passed, she and her app got close and fell in love. On the other hand, her app wanted to be in his son's life. So she told him she would tell her son who his biological father was when he turned 18. Hearing this even broke me, and people began to yell at her, calling her names for being so cruel. Her parents left shamefully, and I threw her and her son out of the house. It's quite painful that she could actually do that to me after all my years of sacrifices and love. So the irony is I have listened to so many stories of mismatched paternity results on this channel. But I believed my wife was faithful and could never do something like that. LOL, so much for trust. Anyways, we divorced. But before we divorced, she got a handful from our neighbors. So the couple of times she had come to beg me to give her another opportunity, my female neighbors would quickly rush their children away from her whenever they saw her like she was some closet monster. As for her app, his wife could not stand the shame, so she divorced. I heard something else happen at his church when members learned about his infidelity and child, but it's not my business. He also moved out of the neighborhood after his marriage because he could not stand the looks of disgust and disappointment from the same neighbors he used to preach to. It's barely a year since this happened, and I'm still healing. I advise every father out there, or expecting father to conduct a paternity test at birth or before birth if you have doubts. This is the worst kind of heartbreak I have ever experienced, and I hope I heal entirely from it. As for relationships, I doubt I'll be in one anytime soon. I'll rather focus on myself and my career and maybe start a business YouTube channel that I've always wanted to.